we're like little bubbles of water, really. Most of us is water, actually. When, when you uh, think about a human body and think about its constituents, I don't know what the figure is, but something like 90% of us is liquid of some sort or other. Uh, this is, you know, probably because originally we came out of the ocean. We came out of the sea. Um, the uh, bodies that we have, that's where they evolve. So our bloodstream is really more or less seawater. Uh, it's red, of course, because it has the hemoglobin in that carries the oxygen around, carries the air around. But uh, other than that, it's basically seawater. And uh, so in a sense, you can think of this uh, physical little capsule that I am as uh, a bit of the ocean that's been taken here on land. You can walk about uh, within this skin. Um, so I have a sort of membrane of skin around that holds this blob of seawater that can walk about on the, on the continent. So that's what we are, um, little blobs. <laughs> so, contemplating the water element, you know, there's water here, um, it flows, uh, it supports life. Here in the early spring, looking into this little pond here, it looks, um, well, it's full of uh, slime of one sort or another. Uh, and that's how life starts. Life starts as, as slime. We all start as slime. Um, even humans, when they're conceived, you know, it's a mixing together of slimes and out of it grows a person. A big blob like this, you know. So getting some sort of sense. The, the Buddha was a great empiricist, really, in many ways. Well, 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 that's the great genius of the Buddha, is that he brought together that empiricism with a, a spiritual outlook, the two together. Um, empirically, he was willing to look at just what we are. You know, you, you read the Buddhist sutras, and you get these itemized lists of all the fluids that we're made up of. Uh, the phlegm, the pus, the bile, the, all the different uh, fluids that run about in our digestive system, um, the blood of course, and um, you know if you get a, a boil or something it fills up with that white liquid that sometimes um, if you pop the boil then it all oozes out. You know many of these liquids that we're made up of are the sort of things that when you think about them you go, uh, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> Conducting these kinds of um, empirical investigations of, of just what is this physical uh, body made up of, uh, the Buddhists came up with a whole set of medica meditations that are called the meditations on the loathsomeness of the body. Um, and you can see why. But the fact is that we are we're made of this liquid element. But the liquid, of course, uh, we can start with our own body, if we like, and, and look at the liquid inside us. And um, But there's liquid all around. You know, all the plants around me here, as I look around the garden, they are full of sap. You know, the sap is rising at the moment. It's, it's the beginning of spring. Uh, if we walk down the hill, uh, we'll come to the river. And we find, you know, at the bottom of the hill, uh, you find the river. And of course water uh, has a great symbolic significance as um, a symbol of spirituality, uh, particularly um, written about in the Taoist classics, that uh, water, it says, is the best thing in the world, is the symbol of the best thing in the world, because water brings life, water nourishes everything, water feeds everything, water benefits everything, and Water adopts the lowest place in doing so. Water always finds the lowest spot. The lake gathers at the bottom in the depression. The river flows downhill. Uh, and in having that bottommost position, the water has huge power. 
that, that water that uh, flows down to the lowest place can erode away a mountain, move a continent, and so on. And when we look at the ocean, which has the lowest place of all, we see that power in, uh, in enormous uh, form. See those huge waves breaking against the cliffs. And we know that although the cliffs tower above the ocean, in the end, it'll be the ocean that wins. So it gives us a great sense of the, the power of the water element. And that's what we're going to be investigating today, uh, the, the great power of the water element, the elements around us, and the presence of the water element in ourselves. When we do these elements meditations, one of the conclusions we come to is that, in one sense, there is no difference between that water out there and this water in here. It's all the same, it's all the same thing, and this is not mine, it's not something that I create, it's not something that I manufacture or can really possess. At the same time, we also get a sense that you know, the waters that make up ourselves are the less pure waters. Uh, the, what becomes of them through our influence uh, is um, something to reflect on. So today we're going to do those reflections.